Okay, three, two, one should be up. Any moment. There's always this delay between Zoom and the lag, right? Yeah. Okay, just let me do a quick refresh. I can see the Facebook Live already. Hello, parents. This is Coach John here from Learning Out of the Box. And today you can see me, yeah, uh, with my good friend Janine. Hi, Janine. Hello. Okay, so um, the reason why I got Janine up uh, is because she's also a parent uh, with, with how many kids ag again? Hey, hey, sorry. Sorry, can you hear me? Yep, can. And you are a mother of uh, how many kids? Two kids. Two kids. Oh, because I thought three. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I and, I and I hold myself back. Is it two or three? <laughs> two okay. kids. Two kids, yeah, and I know that uh, when I first got to know Jordan last year, uh, she is a person who is very into sports. And being a parent myself, sometimes we don't have time, but this mother is really into sports and so interested that even got the whole family into sports as well. And today she's going to talk about the fundamental movements of games for parents and children uh, in terms of bonding uh, within the family. Okay, so over to you and do share with us some backstory of how you got into what you're doing today. And yeah, thank you, John. Thank you so much for inviting me onto this platform to share. Um, yeah, so I'm Janine. I have two kids. Um, one of my son, my younger son is in K2. Uh, my daughter is in primary three this year. Um, yeah, so uh, very active children I have. <laughs> um, very hard to keep their attention and yeah myself and my husband we are um, from sporting background uh, last time and I mean mm. um, I, I went into the corporate world and in recent years I decided to um, explore something myself and I came back into the fitness and sports scene um, and I guess you know having children right um, we see a lot of like benefits and also the need to keep our children busy la. so uh, you know, I was thinking that, you know, how can I marry the two, um, you know, getting children active as well as myself active, <laughs> um, well, you know, with a passion to work towards. And that's how I came about this. And, and to be honest, um, this program that I'm currently creating or thinking of creating, um, it's, it's, you know, uh, actually born out of the circuit breaker period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where we have, you know, our kids, and I'm sure a lot of parents also, um, uh, uh, during that period is, is really struggling yeah. with having your kids with you 24-7 what to do with them you cannot be um, you know just, just forcing assessment books after assessment books and home-based learning after home-based learning uh, yeah so, so, so that period uh, even ourselves sometimes we get frustrated with our kids Mm -hmm. And, you know, then we tried to break the momentum. Um, and there was just this one day I was just playing the bouncy ball with my kids, um, throwing the balls back to each other and we lasted for half an hour. And that's, what, that's oh. when I thought, hey, why not, you know, um, create some home-based programs and uh, combine that with math, um, with language, with, you know, literacy to make it more interesting for the children. Yeah, and also I think I want to touch a little bit on uh, why I chose fundamental movement skills. Um, I think I've, I've been exposed to this concept, um, fundamental movement skills. I got myself certified as a multi-sport coach as well. Um, and that's when I, I learned and realized that it's fundamental movement skills is the foundation. Um, it's really like the foundation, the building blocks um, to you know future active lifestyle um, and we see a lot of sedentary lifestyles right now um, mm -hmm. children all the way to adults even senior citizens right um, and because of technology and things like that mm -hmm. um, but it's very important to get your body moving and getting into fundamental movement is not about building or creating your children to be olympic athletes mm -hmm. uh, olympic medalist it is not that it doesn't mean that you need to be a sportsman um, or you want your kids to be sportsmen then you focus on this area it's it's really you know um getting kids moving getting them active and developing their uh physical as well as psychological um development you know um and fundamental movements is really fundamental it's things like running uh, mm -hmm. gallop, sliding, walking, 
you know, even bouncing a ball, catching a ball, these are fundamental movements. And every kid, every human being need to work on these skills um, mm-hmm. so that they can get into the momentum um, of movements, they can get into the, the spirit of active living. Um, so that, that is why I thought this is really, really important for young children um, to get into and for them to develop you know, a, a really future active lifestyle that will benefit you know, uh, way, way, way into their lives, like all the way, <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, so that's how um, this whole thing came about. And I think also I, I would like to share with parents here as well that, um, that I think research has also shown that um, getting kids physically active helps them academically. There have mm. been many, many research um, that has been done to show the correlation between physical activity um, and children being better academically. And it also develops their psychological skills. Um, mm. Yeah, so uh, it's been shown, I mean, like ch- children who are physically active, they, uh, they have better attention span. Um, they, are, they are able to have like faster cognitive um, you know, development and they are able to concentrate um, better in school. So, I mean, I have come across a lot of parents saying that um, they don't have time. Uh, yeah. You know, now PSLE prelims, right? Mm. Uh, and PSLE coming, uh, um, the, the kids have to, uh, you know, start um, revising day after day, hours after hours. Um, it's assessment books and, you know, um, practicing and things like that. Look, even adults, we cannot take sitting to endless hours of meetings or at our desk. What more kids? Um, so research has really shown that, um, you know, getting physically active does not, does not affect or impede academic, right? In, and if you can have a balance of both, especially during examination times or test preparation times, mm-hmm. have breaks to, to let the kids move. It really will help them refresh and it will help them gain more attention. And I mean, for, for the sanity of parents as well, like, it gives you a break and yeah, yeah, maybe stop some fighting wars between the parent and kid, right? So um, that's why I, um, I would like to share on this topic today. Yeah. When you talk about uh, get, getting kids to move even during the normal uh, like books pra- practice at home, so what are some of the examples? Because I think that uh, some of the points that you shared are very, very valid in the sense that some parents may not even exercise themselves, but they expect the children to sit still and be active. And probably they agree with you that exercising or getting them to move is important, but they themselves don't move much at all. So what are some of the things that parents can do? Well, um, so for, I think, uh, especially if it's home-based, when you're at home, um, really getting up, uh, moving with the kids. I mean, the simplest of the simplest is really doing stretching and some simple exercises. Um, but if you want to make it more fun, especially for the younger kids, lah, um, preschoolers to lower primary um, children who needs a little bit more attraction. Um, there are very simple games that um, you can set up at home that actually don't need a lot of time, do not need a lot of resources. Um, and I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, those um, lunging or just jumping jacks, um, those kind of activities, but something that's fun, right? Um, that, and in fact, you can, you can put in revisions um, into the gameplay as well. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, where, where you can, you know, it's, for example, you can just um, set up um, on, your, on your door some sticky notes with some alphabets or even numbers. Um, you can give out equations and ask the, ask the kid to, you know, really like show a, a bin bag or, or something like a crush paper, very simple, mm-hmm. um, at the answers. So it, it kind of gets them moving. It gets them walking. Um, and it also helps them revise at the same time. So killing two birds with one stone, right? Um, that's our objective, you know. So things like that, it can break the momentum. They are still revising, but, but it really breaks the momentum and get them moving, things like that, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, um, um, later if we have time, I can show a very short, very, very short video, uh, an example of how we can do that, right, um, with the kids. Now, those are in the development to, stage, you know? but yeah, no problem, Sherry. Oh, do you want to show now? I mean, since um, we are at this topic. Sure. 
Yeah, can do. Um, I will show one very short snippet. Um, it's it's something that we developed. It's called Go Alphabets Go. Um, uh, where we where we um create like very simple alphabets on the floor and then get the kids um to move about, right? Um, so let me share. Um, it might not have the music in the background, but just a yeah. very quick snapshot yeah. how it looks like. Just let me also chip in a bit. Uh, for parents who are watching, because I think. Uh, to integrate sports with with academic is something very new for parents, and I think uh, most of us may not be as receptive as you because if it is, I think uh, many kids will be will be able to stay focused. And I think for our parents who are watching this, uh, to take notes that some children are more of a right brainer versus left brainer. The left brainers are the one who can um, get who can tune in into just paperwork sitting there going through the math questions and going through a logical process but for right brainer uh, i would say that probably they are more hands-on they need more creative work to be done and they are kinesthetic by nature so they need to move around they, don't, they need to touch things feel things shift objects uh, run around um, but again the sad truth is this is what most adults will see them as uh, loss of focus, uh, restless, or even not paying attention. And this is such a big impact on the kids. Yeah, so parents, you need to know where your kids lie and how they can, uh, what is their character. Yeah, so that's why Janine, uh, I think for now, she's the best person to share with you because this lady uh, has been into sports her whole life and having a husband who's also into sports, the whole family is very sporty. So, we should, I think this is a great chance to learn a lot from her. And she's not just into one sports lab. Little, please share with us your multi sports. <laughs> uh, and this lady is a sports, sports mommy. <laughs> yeah, so please share you everything. You over compliment me. <laughs> I want you to unload everything uh, because it's, there's, this lady is not just into like, well, or like um, just running or throwing javelin. She's into multi sports. So please share that. It's, the one is something that I want to learn as well, okay? This, definitely, this. definitely, yeah. Please <laughs> remind me if I forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Let me let me just share a very quick yeah, snapshot. Yeah. Um, you know what I was talking about, how you integrate home play la, with literacy. So you know the um your community uh, will be able to understand better. Yes. Right. Um, let's see. There's there's no music, right? Yeah, there's um there there is music. I can do up the music, but it yeah. might be a little bit soft. Sure. Uh, yeah. just know that when you share, uh, mm. click on share computer sound. Oh, okay. Um, share computer sound, right? Yeah. Okay. Can. Okay. Let me try. Um, to see whether you can see. Could you see the share screen? Yes, I can see. There's this boy running. Must be yes. Son, yeah? That's my son. <laughs> oh, now I can see your whole house, huh? Yeah, now you know how my house looks like. <laughs> a lot of space for the children to run around. That's cool. um, yeah, but uh, actually we do have a cabinet in the middle. So in order to um, get some of the activities moving, we just have to move a couple of furniture um, to make it safe. Um, end of the day, you have to take note of safety as well. You don't want to have your kids bumping into corners and things like that. Mm. Yeah. Right. Okay, so um, let me show. This is um, like, we, we just set up like alphabets using colored tapes yeah. on the floor. Yeah, then we will like, you know, just, yeah. Like, I think we'll gallop around the empty space, you know, yeah. Your boy is uh, K2 means... Uh, K2, six this year. This year one. Yes, P1 next year. Let's just enjoy it, you know. Come on, let's continue to gallop, yeah. gallop, gallop. And run to A. Oh, so for example, you jump onto A and say A. A stands for apple or aeroplane. Well done. So it's, it's something like that. You know, you can um like uh, we did a, a few variations. This is alphabets and what alphabets stand for. Um, we also have variations where we get them to spell. Um, let me show you some example. Um, this is my video in making. Okay, can I just break it down? Um, right. like break down what you just did into uh some important parts because I think parents who are not used to all this, they'll miss a lot of of uh 
conscious uh, words use. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right. So, uh, so if you heard what Janine said just now is um, she, he enc uh, she encourages her son to run around. And in fact, um, as the son as your son runs around, um, there's always words coming out from you, getting him to go on. Yeah, because I think versus some parents will say just, hey, go and run. Then they'll stop there. So right. this is when kids like, run, okay, run. They don't feel engaged. But the parent can say, run on, run on, continue to run until the music stops. And then you must continue to uh, say, run, run, run. Then you use the word ga uh, gallop, right? Gallop. Yep. gallop, yeah. Then you say the word jump, yeah. So very short action words that is very clear for kids. And sometimes uh, as parents, some of parents, they told me, uh, John, uh, I teach my child a lot of times, uh, but my child doesn't understand. Um, sometimes they may not even understand the words that you use. Are you using words that fit your kids as well? And then when your son jump onto A, you explicitly say, explicitly say A for airplane and apple, and then you say the word well done, and so end of your praise. Yeah, so I think that because you are very well trained in sports aspect with kids, that's why um, I guess you know the different parts that is important in facilitating the right. limitations of the kids. Yeah, so I, I think uh, you, you really got it, like, um, you know, um, you, you really got it all. Um, constant encouragement, um, always mm. giving the cues um, so that the kids uh, are able to continue doing the action. Um, and, you know, um, encouragement is very, very important. And encourage them not at the end result, not just because they got it right, even if they got it wrong. Uh, it is even more important to encourage them for the effort that they put in. Because I think um, nowadays, um, I, you know, a, a lot of us, I mean, we are guilty of it as well as parents. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we say that, uh, okay, um, you know, if you, if you get A's, if you get four A's for your exams, uh, we get to go on a family trip to where and where, right? Mm -hmm. So that is like rewarding based on results. Mm -hmm. okay? um, so the kids will always be very stressed, thinking mm -hmm. that they have to get um, certain A's and results, things like that, um, before they get recognized, before they can get praised. Um, mm. We might not realize it, but it can be quite detrimental to the children because mm. they are always trying to live up to expectations. Um, and it, it, it then gives them a lot of um, pressure, unnecessary pressure. They already have so much to handle, right? I mean, we, we all know uh, education nowadays and education 30 years ago is so different. Mm. Um, the expectation is so, so much higher. So, so do encourage them for putting in the efforts. Um, reward them for the efforts that they have actually put in. Even like running, um, you know, well done, things like that. It's these small little snippets of encouragement and recognition goes a very, very long way. Right? Um, so when we, when we develop these programs, when we design these programs, um, we put in elements where we build mental toughness skills for the children as well. Um, things like building their, their confidence through encouragement. Um, sometimes even through play, like for parents, if, if you're really interested to conduct such play, um, you can even, I mean, this is contrary to popular belief, but you can deliberately, purposely let them fail. So mm. meaning to say that deliberately do a countdown, let's say, and make sure that they don't get the result. Right? Mm. So it's um, to purposely let them not achieve the end result and then you encourage them and say hey let's try again let's try again and the next time um, you know you also time it deliberately such that they just hit the result they just achieve the result and you have no idea how much you know it goes to show the kids that um, by putting in this extra effort um, you know by trying a little bit harder I can get there so it's, it's very important as parents, I think we, pay, we play a very great part um, in educating our kids mm. uh, and building them to be really strong, resilient kids uh, who are able to cope with um, you know, failures and mm. then stand up stronger. Mm. Right? So these are all mental toughness elements, you know, composure, keeping composure, being able to cope uh, with stressful environments and things like that. Yeah, so all these can be put into one simple gameplay. Mm. Yeah, so, so um, that's why, you know, we wanted to come up with such a program that we thought 
um, our friends and uh, you know um, fellow parents could benefit from um, yeah with their kids. That's what we're looking at. Yes. So this is this is just one of the ways. There are many other um, um, ways or methods that you can just use a small space in your house to do it. You don't don't even need to you know um, go out to the park and things like that. Um, yeah, and and I think also um, when I when I speak with fellow parents about hey, how come you are not getting your kids um, into sports activities? Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the 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 very common excuse is um, one, my kids are not interested in sports. Um, number two is oh, we don't have time. We have uh, many other um, classes and enrichment. Mm-hmm. Um, number three is you know um, basically oh um I have no aspiration for my kid to be a, a star sport mm-hmm. athlete. Um, my kid is not interested to go into um, school team, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that is really missing the point. Um, it's it's not about really developing champions. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about developing the champion in the kid mm-hmm. um, to be able to uh, you know um, um, stand out confident in the society to be able to live a healthy lifestyle. Like end of the day, like what are parents afraid of? The future of your kids, right? Um, and, and you want healthy living kids. Um, you want them to be able to go on uh, with life on their own, to be confident individuals, to be successful individuals. So why not give them a head start right now? Hmm. Do you yeah. have any more things to share? I mean, if not, you can probably um, yeah, I can, share them yeah. and get you back into uh, the gallery view. Sure thing. Um, yeah, so maybe let me just uh, share um, uh, something, some, uh, another um, material that I have um, that if parents are interested, you know, um, you can PM me. Um, we have not um, made the business official yet, but um, anytime you can PM me, I'll be more than happy to share, right? Uh, so this, this you see right now is, um, you know, for, for parents who... Um, whom you know you you want to think about or consider how you can create such um, games like uh, such games play at home. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so these are some materials that we have also created to guide you. Like what are the things that you require, um, how you can set up, and then the variations of play. Mm. So how you can conduct it on your own. So um, yeah, yeah. If you're interested, just uh, drop me a PM and we can always connect. Okay, and I will stop share from now. Yeah, and I think uh, let's let's do a quick recap because I think uh, I don't want the parents to limit their creativity into because uh, what Janine did was for al- al- uh, alphabets and that's all you can do for alphabets and or you can only do that for alphabets. No, in fact, if you want, if you want to do for math, you can change the alphabets to numbers. Or if you want to do for any things that your kids are learning, be it for example, um, like maybe names of vehicles for younger kids, um, you can just, I wouldn't say throw, place the the objects all over the floor and get the children to move in mm-hmm. instead of having them on the table and then you are just trying to read it off on a book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for primary school kids, uh, what I can think of right now is... Um, you can actually use Lego bars or you can actually place them away from the study table such that there's some movement between the table where your child start, studies and to another table where the Lego bars are so that your child has the opportunity to move a short distance. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you, you can even do a treasure hunt out of it. Hide the... tell, us, tell us more on that. Like, yeah, like um, for example, you can um, let's say numbers. Let's let's take math for example. Yeah. Right. Um, you can print out or write out a few slips of numbers. You hide it around the house or a a, a grid area like Maybe a, the kids' room, something like mm-hmm. that. Then um, you give out an equation. a simple equation. Two plus two. You know, and you ask your child um to go and look for the answer. And, and if, you, if you know you want to add more challenge, you can ask them, okay, um, you got to hop around while you look for the answer. Oh. Yeah, so like even hopping, galloping, all these are fundamental movements. Mm. Right? Um, in fact, um, like number bonds, I think number bonds is, is really uh, the foundation to primary oh. one math. Um, some of the preschools are starting to introduce this in K2. Right? Um, we can even create games out of number bonds. You teach them the concept of number bonds, um, 
like using Lego and number bonds, ask them to go and find the uh, um, certain colored Legos, put it into one circle, um, then find, find the other set of um, objects, put it into a second circle and let them count so that they get used to it. Because um, I think really, really my own experience as um, when, when I was a first time P1 mom, mm-hmm. um, was not taught when we were in school. Right. Um, so even that itself was a learning for me as a mom, what more a kid. So we can introduce such kind of concepts even math, like science, uh, Chinese, right? Um, if you want your kid to be more associated with language, I think Chinese is a challenge for a lot of kids uh, and a lot of parents, and, but it is so important a language um, of our heritage to learn as well, right? or any other languages. Yeah, so, so these can be easily incorporated. It, you do not need to just restrict to um, numbers or, or simple numbers or simple alphabets. You can even do shapes or colors, or anything else. Yeah. Hmm. I, um, I can also hear some parents asking, uh, like, how, how do I know uh, if it's necessary to include all these um, movement uh, while they teach their children at home? And so what are some of the cues, the visual cues, or what must they see or know that my, that, that my child is suitable for this? Okay, um, so... Uh, in terms of suitability, right, mm. um, every child is suitable because these are fundamental movements, which yeah. means that um, every, every human being will need to develop these skills to move. So fundamental movements, um, by definition, means like moving your body from one place to another, mm. like even taking a step. So fundamental movements include um, running, slide, gallop, hop, um, jump, jumping upwards, vertical mm-hmm. jump, jumping forward, um, horizontal jump, even dodging. So these are fundamental locomotor skills. Um, then object control skills include like um, bouncing a ball, catch, rolling, throwing, like throw you have different types like overhand throw and underhand throw, mm-hmm. um, even kicking, punting. So these are very, very basic skills um, that every child will need to develop. So in terms of suitability, Everything is suitable and in fact, it's a must for the child. So how, how do you then incorporate is um, then you just, um, you, you let your child get used to um, developing such skills. You can start with just running. Mm. Make sure the, the home environment is safe. Yeah. Um, don't ask them to sprint. Just slow mm. jog, jog around, run around. Um, sometimes, you know, even kids, uh, hand-eye coordination or hand-leg coordination uh, when you run, you're supposed to be right hand, left leg, left hand, right leg, right? Um, so even such simple things, you need to develop from young. So just start them off with running first. Um, then you start galloping or sliding. Sliding is left to right. Galloping is frontwards, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so things like that. It's very easy. You just tell them gallop around um, to look for something. Then you can then e- like easily incorporate it even in your daily life. Yeah. Or when they are from your door to the lift. Mm. Yeah, like just challenge them to see who can hop faster to the lift. Yeah, so then you can see whether or not um, the child is able to maintain balance, uh, mm-hmm. whether or not they can hop um, properly and things like that. Yeah, without tripping over. Yeah, so these are just skills um, that they, you can put in into daily life. Yeah, just, just let me chip in a bit because uh, and I teach my girls um, all the subjects and there are times that uh, when we do quizzes, we actually cross cross uh, test each other, yeah. And then some 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 of the like the fun okay to include to make it fun, we have punishment in a sense of uh, in a fun way that if you don't know how to answer, you have to do some jumping jacks or exercise, yeah. And sometimes uh, when it comes to the quiz itself, maybe I win because I know more, but. When you when you want to test stamina, and if you're someone who don't exercise a lot, this is when me as a dad will lose to my kids because they are they have so much energy in them. Yeah. So what, what I want to share is probably you can actually make it fun for the children. And sometimes when your children see that it, actually the parents may not win them in all aspects, it may, it brings out the confidence in them. And I think there's not much of shaming here because sometimes our children need to know that they are also good in certain stuff. And it's okay that sometimes we parents 
lose to them. When I play the uh, new Nintendo Switch, I always lose to my kids because they are so fast. And they ask me, Papa, why, why, why are you so slow? And I'm, speech- I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> yeah, totally get that. Right? Because as parents, as adults, we always think that we must be better than our kids, better than the younger people. Um, but it's no, you know, in terms of flexibility, reaction time, they beat us anytime. <laughs> really anytime. Sometimes even accuracy. Um, even when we are playing like uh like like showing aiming at the, the sticky notes on the door. My yeah. daughter can do it better than me sometimes. <laughs> you know, because um I think kids really do not underestimate them. And it's okay to be paise to those. If, if they say, well, you know why you're so slow and things like that, they say, yeah, love, you're better than me. And they yeah, feel triumphant. They really feel triumphant and, and, yeah. and it helps them, encourage them to want to do more of it. Yeah, so it's okay to lose face as parents sometimes. Yes, yes. And, and, and I think uh, it, it depends for the parents like what, what sort of family culture you want to build in in the family yeah so what i want to say is uh it's okay for parents to lose then you watch what will your children do yeah and sometimes as spouse maybe because my wife lost in a nintendo switch game so i encourage her and your and the kids sorry and they also say that hey actually mommy is okay let's try again so i think uh a lot of times uh when we parents decided to take the first step and lose you can watch what your children do after that to encourage each other to not give up. Yeah, so I think as uh, that is very, very uh, important for, for, for me and the family. Yeah. So it yes. helps also to encourage your kids as well. Yes, yeah. So I think there are so many things we can learn um, from each other and so many aspects. It's not just one or two aspects to parenting. Um, yeah, and, and there are so many... Um, Things that we can do out there, so many opportunities we can create for our child. End of the day, we are, uh, it's for the kids. It's you know, really for the child and how we can then contribute. And actually, we grow ourselves. We learn um, ourselves. We learn patience mm-hmm. right? um, and we learn tolerance sometimes and we learn creativity. Because mm-hmm. yeah, their, their span gets you know, um, dried out very quickly, right? So how do you be creative to get your kids engaged all the time? Uh, so I think there's so much learning for parents as well. Mm. Yes. Um, and just now I did share that uh, because I know that you are into multi-sports. So can yes. you uh, spend some time on that? And then how do you en- engage your children uh, in multi-sports also as a mommy? Right. Um, so my, my background, um, I started off um, in sports when I was in school. Um, yeah, I, I played several sports in primary school. Um, I played um, table tennis, volleyball for fun, <laughs> but never really excelled in those. Um, then I moved on in secondary school. I, I um, moved on to specialize in squash. Um, yeah, I played for play squash for school, and um, go on, go on. I yeah, <laughs> then, <laughs> then in JC in college, I moved into touch rugby when it was oh. first. Yeah, <laughs> touch rugby, touch rugby, not so bad. Not the, I, mean, I mean, I'm not sure. Is it those rough type? No, it's not. It's not. Other. It's not the contact rugby type. It uh, it's it's quite different. So contact rugby is a lot about the. Um, strengths, right? And mm. um, yeah, the, the contact, the scrums and all. So it's not. Um, the one that I was in is touch rugby. Okay. It's a lot faster. It is um, super, super sonic speed kind. So you require okay. a lot of speed and strategy um, in, in playing touch rugby. So I specialize in that. Um, I got my um, coaching license in that. I was coaching for a while um, when I was in university lah, to, to get my own pocket money. You know, mm-hmm. um, then after that, I think was, you know, after graduation, um, corporate world took over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, I decided that maybe I retire from sport, bank account more important at that time. Okay. Um, but the, the, the problem is once I retired from sport and you know, when I let work take over, um, mm-hmm. I think many of you might be able to relate to that. It's yeah. your life really becomes sedentary. Um, you don't even have energy at all. So mm. you don't want to go out and exercise. 
I um and it was very very hard to pick up after so many years um of such kind of lifestyle, um and when I come when I came back into fitness industry, uh when I start working out and things like that, I could feel the energy level is so much different, and 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 it really it really makes um a world of difference ah, uh. yeah and and I mean um for my kids so so we encourage um our kids to be physically active. Um, my daughter is more artsy, right? Um, mm. she's more towards the arts side. Um, however, she likes ballet, so mm. even ballet and dancing is is movement is also moving. So we let her focus on ballet. Mm. Um, in recent years, she started liking badminton. Um, so we requested for her to join the the badminton CA in school and things like that. And mm -hmm. um, we just want the kids to to keep moving. Um, so that you know they they really have the habit of that. My son, he's in preschool. Um, I enrolled him in the multi sports program, yep, so that at least um every week they do um get into it, physical activities and things like that. Um, and the weekends, um, my husband will you know sometimes um play um badminton with them. Um, we during circuit breaker we had to set up a <laughs> temporary. Badminton at home, you know, where, where you just dangle the shuttlecock from the ceiling and just let them hit things like they're very very simple, yeah. And and I think um I see the benefits of sports um, and it doesn't have to be competitive sports, but I see a lot of benefits because uh in my corporate world um I also had um an opportunity to to work with um even Sports Singapore um mm -hmm. to bring in like athletes into the corporate world. Right, um, to give them the opportunity to work while also representing the nation, right, in sports, and um, it is it is very very re rewarding to see the the level of tenacity, the mm -hmm. mental strength um, that people who have exposure in sports, the way that they use that tenacity in a work environment is mind blowing. It's really mind blowing. Um, that they are able to to stand up to different kind of stress and pressure in the workplace. Mm. So these are the kind of benefits in sports, especially teamwork as well. Right? Mm. When you engage in team sports, um, you understand um, how team spirit works and the benefits of which. Yeah, so that's why we are always, always encouraging our kids to at least be physically active mm. and be exposed um, to sports. And why multi sports, right? You might ask. Why not just focus on one or two sports? Um, let's, can yeah. you share a bit on uh, what is the meaning of multi sport? Because I think as a parent, for myself, uh, we are so used to oh, if you want to join uh, sports, it's either this or that. Like for example, swimming classes, and so you sign up your child for one whole year of swimming classes or versus volleyball in school. So you only focus on volleyball. For the whole year. So, what do you mean by multi sports? Yep. Um. So yeah, multi sports basically it means multiple kinds of sports. Mm -hmm. Um. I think the the education environment has has been such that we tend to uh, want to create specialist kids. Um. Mm. Like for example, um, if they start showing interest in badminton, or if if the parent wants them to play badminton, they start from a young age all the way. Um, to their teenage, right? Um, or even later years. Um, but multi sport means to expose them to various types of sports. So mm. even if the strong interest, let's say, is in badminton, right? Um, you expose them to other sports like basketball, um, uh, football, um, you know, softball, baseball, um, even like combat sports. Um, uh, when they are a little bit older, taekwondo, um. Aikido, you know, all such these things. So that um, why multi sport is because it phys physically it develops them the different parts of the body. Because mm. specific parts, no, sp sorry, uh, specific sports uh, works on very specific parts of the body, mm -hmm. and overusing can actually cause injury in the long term. Mm. So that's one thing. Henceforth, um, physiologically speaking exposure to different sports is better in physical development. Secondly, is mental development. So uh, I, I think as educators, um, you understand that some kids are late bloomers. Mm. And kids especially can change their interest um, over time. 
right? By specializing them in a certain spot since young um, and making them stick to it um, will actually create stress and pressure if their interests change. If they feel like today I don't like badminton anymore, like, you know, five years down the road, I prefer basketball, um, but I have to stick to it. I have no choice. It, it becomes miserable. They don't like the sport anymore. They will hate the sport. Mm -hmm. um, but because they have never been exposed to other sports, they cannot pick it up on a level that they like to. So being exposed to different types of sports is very important from young. Right. Um, so these are the, uh, various, various reasons. And different sports also cultivate different kind of um, um, literacy and cognitive behaviors. Right. Um, mental toughness, um, variability as well. Yeah. Some team sports, of course, have team cohesiveness. Individual sports is, you know, um, sometimes it's about maintaining composure and things like that. So exposure will then broaden the, the breadth of things. Mm. Yeah. So that's, that's what I mean by multi-sports. Yeah. Then um, if I can also add a little bit more yes, at, a, on, yeah, yeah. at a very young age for preschoolers especially, um, multi-sports doesn't mean that um, they need to learn the technical skills of sports. Mm. Like, uh, they don't, don't, doesn't mean that they have to learn how to play basketball the way basketball is to be played. Mm. Right? For them, let's say uh, multi-sports, uh, let's say this, one, this month is focused on basketball. It's about bouncing. Um, it's about hand-eye coordination, like dribbling the balls or shooting. So that's like throwing, right? Um, so these are the skills that we develop based on the needs of the sport. But it doesn't mean the technical aspect of the sport. Then the next month, we move to, um, let's say, golf. Right? So golf is about swinging, you know, um, really focusing and aiming, things like that. Right? So that is how you should um, expose your kids to multi-sports, yeah. Um, because when you're sharing, I'm also reflecting how I can get my kids to be involved because she's, okay, both kids are learning Taekwondo. Yeah, of course, the eldest one is interested in basketball. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe during my free time, I can also bring her to just bounce around. Um, I mean, because the nearest basketball court is very far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... I'm thinking how to engage her playing basketball without doing it in a basketball court. Right. Yeah, you can... Um, if you live on the ground floor, it's safer so that your neighbours won't complain. You can <laughs> bounce uh, in your house or, or if not along the corridor sometimes. Right? Um, and it doesn't have to be daily. Uh, occasionally, once a week or once every two weeks, you can bring her to the basketball court um, to learn bouncing, shooting. Uh, or if, let's say, you live, like, like for me, I, I live on the top floor, um, so my neighbor will complain uh, if I'm too noisy. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be an actual basketball basketball. You can even use balloons. Mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, something like that. And it's, it's really just get them to get used to the movement. Um, but I believe your, the, your eldest daughter is um, older, right? 10 years old. Yeah, so, so I think the actual ball itself will attract her more. Yeah, she wants yeah. the yeah. actual ball. Yes, so yeah, you don't have to do it every day if it's far away. Like maybe just um, um, every, say, Thursday evening before dinner, just bring her there. Yeah, it's, it can always be worked out. Or weekend, lo. yeah. Or you can even have play dates. <laughs> play dates at the basketball court when uh, phase three reopened. <laughs> Actually, in fact, I do see many kids playing at a basketball court already. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, not kids, uh, those are uh, teenagers yes. and also grown-ups. Grown yes. Yeah, yeah. Just, just have to make sure that, you know, you keep to the safe distancing. Lah. Don't get yourselves into unnecessary trouble. Awesome. Okay, I think uh, we have come to almost the end, but we still have some time. Lah. So I think it would be good for you to elaborate. Um, okay. Um. Probably for me, because I have uh, talked to many parents and I guess uh, there are not many who are like you or I don't know at least um, that they are into sports. Yeah, so even for my friends who are parents, um, most of them are not into sports. Uh. Probably they just watch K-drama K at home or they just want to lace around. Uh, playing, if, if I say, hey, let's, let's go for sports, like they will go, huh? 
Yeah, yeah. Even for me, I'm not a sports person, but I try to because for my kids. Yeah. So um what would be one easy way for parents to start? Uh especially those who are very self-aware, they want to try, they want to do it for their kids, but they don't know how. Right. Um, I think the, the first important thing to do is before engaging in any activity is first is to change the mindset. Mm. I, and um, I think parents need to understand that it's not about sports, sports, not mm. specifically sports per se. Um, it's, it's really active lifestyle. Mm. If getting kids moving. Um, like really, it doesn't mean that you need to train your child to play or to eventually play a certain sport. You, all you want is your kid to be um, physically active, to be moving, and not seated with the computer game the whole time. Mm-hmm. I, um, yeah, so that is, that is the first thing that um, I think the parent, parents need to understand. And don't confuse sports with having to develop a sportsman out of your kid. It isn't. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it really is bringing out physical activity. Um, so what is the, the, an easy way... Um, to engage in physical activity with your kids, the easiest, easiest, easiest way is really to get out of the chair mm-hmm. and walk. Mm. Really get out of the chair, go down you know, um, to the park, walk around the park. That's, it requires no resources. Uh, it only requires a little bit of time. Mm. Um, talk to them along the way, teach them what you see in the environment along the way. Um, that could get things started and get things moving. And if you want to think about what we were talking about earlier, having um, physical activities at home, um, one of the simplest, or in fact, I can, I can give you an, um, two suggestions right now. Yep, sure. Two simplest games that uh, we have. It's, one is, you know, like sticky notes or post-it notes. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, really just, just write a few alphabets um, and paste it on a door or a wall. And um, if you have a beanbag, great. If you don't have, just crush a rough paper or um, a used piece of paper. Um, and really just get your kids um, to, to, to learn throwing and aiming hmm. um, at the alphabets that you call or even numbers. Let's do numbers since, you know, John is in math. Let's do numbers, <laughs> right? Uh, write different numbers. Um, you can start by just asking them to throw a specific number. Then you move on to simple equations depending on the age of your our child. Mm-hmm. Uh, you move on to simple in- equations, then you can call out characteristics of um, the numbers. Um, you can, can ask them to, okay, can you show at prime numbers? So you cultivate such learning to the kids. Um, mm-hmm. And it does not only need to stand there and throw. You can also ask them to move, ask them to, okay, hop to the door and pick up the sticky note that is the greatest number on the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so these are so, it's so simple. Um, you just need a few post-it pads and a pen. That's all. Another one that um, parents can create like very quickly is if you have masking tape um, or colored tape, if you, not necessarily colored tape, it's just masking tape. Or if you don't have right, those erasable crayons, uh, if you don't mind like, like drawing on your floor and wiping away later, mm-hmm. you just draw three to five lines on the floor. Three to five parallel lines. And ask the, your child to jump and see who can jump the furthest. Oh, kids, kids, so, will kids, kids will win. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and sometimes you don't even realize, right, what strong limbs they have. I'm amazed that my son is six, right? Mm. But the distance he can jump is amazing. It's like scary. Mm. Yeah, so, so they might even out jump us. You know, so these are very, very simple things that you can just set up immediately. Sometimes you don't even need to, to have those horizontal lines. You can just ask them to start to jump from here to there. Yeah, or, or you have a starting point, ask them to pick up things, go shuttle run lah, to and fro. Just a short break um, through in the midst of their studies will we'll give them some sanity and give you some sanity as well. Awesome, yes. Right. Yeah, just let me uh, summarize for the parents um, like what they can do when it comes to math. Yeah, because I think uh, sports and math itself, or even sports and studying, uh, I think it's not something, it's a it's not a combi that most parents are firm, familiar with. Lah. Because I think being a better task fo- focused that uh, we will just, okay, maths, you do maths. Running, you do running. Yeah, eat, you eat, you don't talk. 
Yeah, so for parents, um, I think what we are trying to do here uh, with Janine's help is um, she's a mommy with two kids and her girl is also a, a very bright girl in one of the top schools in, in, uh, in Singapore. And yes, both parents are into sports. So, uh, but what we're trying to say here is there's no need for you and your, your husband or wife to be into sports to be able to add all these activities into your daily life style. Yeah, it's actually it's a daily lifestyle. Yeah, so so uh, if you're if you're facing such issues like your child is not losing is 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 losing focus, not sitting still, uh, not paying attention, always fidgeting, and you find yourself always screaming, pulling your hair, shouting, going nuts, like what it happens to me sometimes. Your child needs to move. Don't go against yeah, and there are many proven ways like what Janine has said that allows your child to move and learn at the same time. Yeah, and that's, and you have, um, as a parent, we have to change first. We cannot expect our children to change uh, without changing our own mindset. Um, yeah, so so uh, we really hope to support you in this kind of way. Uh, I mean, we can't go to your house and change your kid. Lah. Only you can do that, mommy and daddy, okay? Yeah. Okay, we are come to the last part. Um, I have so many tips that you have shared. Um, what would be one final takeaway for parents that they can use right now? Um, okay, so the, the key thing is really um, get your child physically moving and be involved in their lives as well. Uh, participate together with them. I think it, it, it really helps to encourage um, the, the child or the children to want to do activities. I think uh, uh, really family bonding um, is what we want to promote here. Then family bonding with active kids. Um, so that is what I think um, each family should, should really work on and it really will go a long way. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that, that's what I want to leave the audience with. Yeah, and I totally agree with this because I, um, we have so talked to other parents and uh, they say, they, okay, they, they use similar words like relationship, trust, communication. And uh, I really want to thank you for wrapping it up with, with this word, yeah. So parents, um, eventually the bonding can only be done by you with your kids. So don't say you have no time. We parents also don't have time, but if relationship is very important to you, you need to invest in your kid by spending time every single day with your kids, yeah. Yeah, really. If you have no time, create it. Make time, yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually, I like the part mm. that you make time for it. Uh, because, uh, I mean, this is what I learned from exercising. Uh, like, for example, if you meet a client, for example, we will consciously jot it down into the our diary, saying that mm. this one to two p.m. is the is a time block off for the client. Yeah. So actually, what I did is I jot down and make appointment with my exercise. True. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, that's yeah. how we function, right? Why not jot down and make an appointment with your kids? Correct. Like yeah, so just we... just allocate an hour a, a weekend if you are working, if you are very, very busy, just one hour, one precious hour with your children. Um, doing anything, I like really, really, really doing anything. Um, doesn't have to be what what we are saying lah. Work out at home. Um, but uh, really just spending that precious time with your child. They grow up so fast. You know, yeah, yeah you, you can't turn back time. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it shows we are going old also. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and we have limited lifespan. Yes. Spend <laughs> it meaningfully, don't regret. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I think um, also to add on that, yeah, there's, there's this mom uh, who says that um, every night, okay, she has three kids as well. Yeah, later I will tell you the age group. Sure. Yeah. So every night, there will be half an hour of undisturbed time that the mommy will tuck them in. Mm. And the dad cannot come in at all. And this will be the time that mommy and the child will talk. I, oh, yeah. And in fact, awesome. yeah, mm. and in fact uh, I also heard this similar example with another mommy as well. Yeah. And the son actually asked the mommy to come in when he realized that mommy has been so busy yeah because she, he will say mommy it's been a long time that you have tucked me in um and he missed it yeah uh 
Do you want to guess how old is the son? I, I don't know. Should be like lower primary? I, okay, I will give you three, three lives. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> gone. Okay, one one gone. <laughs> okay, this sounds like a trick question. <laughs> yeah. Okay, different age range. So not preschool age. Say la, say a number la. Number la. Um maybe about six. Then cannot. What's wrong? La? Yeah, so one last choice. So sorry, okay, one I last chance. Yeah. Ten. Also wrong. <gasps> How old? Twenty one. No way. Yeah. So the mummy has been diligently doing that since birth all the way until right now. And wow. the relationship between the son and the mother is superb. And he will wow. tell the mummy every single thing that happened to him. And the mummy will always not judge him for the past over 21 years. And, and she said that she will continue to do that as long as this boy is her son. Of course, it's that forever. Lah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's a very powerful story, even for me, lah. Yeah. That's our it parenting is, doesn't right? stop here. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we don't even speak to our own siblings. Correct. You yeah. know. Yeah. One more like twenty one years at twenty one year old is is really amazing. Honestly, it's really amazing. Yeah. And that's a dad. Um. Not. I. I think you know him. Uh. Marvin Yo. Ah, I've heard of Marvin. Yes. Yeah. He's not my dad, lah. Even though he's have same surname. <laughs> Um, he's learning ukulele now he's not into music but he said that he's, he learned it so that there's some, he has something to talk about with uh, his daughter oh, so his, his daughter is learning ukulele mm. wow so he went to pick it up himself so that they have a common topic to talk about wow and the daughter I think already in her 20s Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, I think uh, the reason why I share this at the end is really, um, I think a reminder for myself that our parenting doesn't stop at PSLE or at O level. Uh, if you want, okay, for myself, I always ask myself, if my if I want my three girls to hug me, to talk to me, even in their uh thirties or forties, uh, I better invest in spending time with them right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, help her talk to them, share with them what I'm thinking, even right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's it's not the quantity, it's also the quality of time that you spend with them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and and I think um the reason why we put this up also is um many parents actually I still keep in touch with them when their children are already in set one. And they came on telling me, and I saw a pattern, which is my kids don't want to talk to me. Yeah. So I asked them a question. So have you been talking to your kids when they were younger? A lot of them didn't reply. But of course, we know, we know that it's not very active. Yeah. So parents, uh, I really want to use this chance, uh, if you're still online with us right now, talk to your kids because we have worked with thousands of kids. I mean, for Janine and myself, we have seen a lot of kids stop talking to their parents um, when they reach teenagers or even after 12. Uh, you can avoid this by spending more time with your kids right now. And wow. doing sports is, 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 is one of them. Yeah, it's a way to break barriers, to communicate. I think even, even um, you don't even have to wait until when they're teenagers. Like sometimes that is already too late. Um, at a young age, I mean, from, from my own experience as a parent, um, when I was in the corporate world, um, you know, it's, um, I, I travel so much. I was doing regional work, right? So yeah. I was hardly in Singapore. Mm. Uh, most of the time at Changi Airport or somewhere in the sky. Then like, there was one day that my daughter, uh, when I came back, I was at home. Um, and my daughter said that, how come you are not on the aeroplane today? Wow. And then she walked off. You have no idea how hurtful that was. And, yeah. But that is also like a wake up call. Um, that's, that's one of the triggers when I started deciding that, you know, maybe it's, um, you have to think beyond uh, um, having a, a beautiful high flying career at the expense of your family. I, um, yeah, so, so that's, that's where, how I got to where I am right now. Yeah. Yes, um, I, I see that there's a Yeah, just question. a quick question before mm. we, we wrap up. Yeah, we sure. wrap. 
how would you encourage and energize teenagers to start playing sport or move their butts? Um, they tried many ways, like they did online exercise or jogging, soccer, get them involved, but fail to engage them. Um, I think first and foremost, uh, what do the, your children like? Mm. I, um, and I, I'm guessing that, um, I'm just, just guessing, and please correct me if wrong, um, that some of these teenagers or your child might be, they, they don't like to move. They prefer their computers um, and gadgets. So henceforth, it's very hard to get them um, to be involved in physical activities, right? Mm -hmm. um, so first thing is um, find out what is their interest. Mm -hmm. What do they like? Even if it's video games, what kind of genre they like? Mm -hmm. uh, especially music or even music, what kind of music they like? The K-pop kind, um, you know, the rock kind. I don't know, um, you know, what, what, what kind of music they like. What is their interest first? Understand them. Start having conversations with them first. Okay, then you get them to go out. Go for family walks. Um, just like, you know, just allocate time to, to go out with them um, to do um, like, like uh, physical activities or, or go and climb Bukit Timah Hill. Mm. You know, something like that. Uh, as simple as that. Start um you 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 if you if you start forcing them and pushing them to a play this spot play that spot, um it kinds of backfires because it might not be what they are interested in, or mm. secondly they might just be rebellious. It's like you want me to do I die I don't want to do, yeah you know, yeah. So it could be as well. So start building that relationship first. Start having the communication and conversations with them. Start letting them know that, uh, you know, I'm I'm your parent. You don't have to cut me off. I'm I'm interested. Sometimes you you have to learn. Like I learn music from my child. Um. Yeah. She knows more songs than I do. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Things like that. And then you start to get to know them. And then you ask them to suggest, or even ask them to suggest. Give them the empowerment. Um. To create. Ask them to suggest or create something to do as a family. Um, ask them to suggest what sport they want to play. I mm -hmm. um, just even allocate, say, one or two days a month if it's if they you don't even engage in any right now. One or two days a month. I um, get them to say that okay, this is your day. You decide what we're gonna do today. I um, but you can have all the caveats lah. But no computer games, uh, no TV shows, you know, it's, it's, you can set rules and they have to create something out of that rule. So sometimes kids want to be in power. Um, mm. They want to have that, um, um, what, what do you call that? Um, that control, mm. right? Yeah, they feel that they are in control. Uh, give it to them. Let them have it. And then you are at their mercy, lah. You know, yeah, and um, and then you know, just just get that moving first. Then slowly, slowly encourage them um to get into different kinds of plays, different kind of sports. Um, let them try it out. If they really don't like, you don't have to force. Mm -hmm. Um, but make sure that they get some physical activities going. Um, not just sitting on the computer twenty four seven. Um, it's not good for them physically. Hmm. Yeah. Probably let me just add a bit because I, I think that um, you have lots to share also. I, 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 I want to just put uh, what Janine has said into actionable steps now for the parents. Um, okay, I really like the points that um, the family comes together to plan the sports activity for that week or that month. Yeah, so uh, sometimes if it's not a norm that in the family to do it like five times a week is going to kill the interest. So space out once a week and then get the children and, and the family to buy in that, that uh, whatever games that you choose, we will all join you together because we know that it interests you. Yeah, so let's say your, your, your teen is into rollerblading. Yeah, probably, I mean, I'm thinking of sports that interest them. Um, if you really want to get involved with your kids and enter their life, learn rollerblading them uh, yourself. You can fall, you can sign up for classes. Uh, okay, for teenagers, it's a bit trickier to work with them um, because they need to see that you, mommy, is putting in effort to come into my world, not the other way around. Yeah. Um, I actually bought the Nintendo Switch for my children and we had this game on sports. 
So after playing one hour, we were all sweating. <laughs> so if your children are into computer games, uh, and if you're open to that, yes, Nintendo Switch is another computer game, but it can be played as a family rather than just on a phone. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I absolutely agree. It's like when, when we say like um, computer and sedentary, it means that, you know, you just use your fingers and you sit there. Um, but um, games or activities that uses the computer or the TV, um, but gets you moving, right? That's okay. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, it's, it's more active, um, active technology. Yeah, mommy was sharing more things out. You can read, I mean, we'll try our best to, to address the question because uh, right. I know Eugenia is also very active in our Facebook group and we really want to help her. Yeah, she's yes. a very hands, hands-on mommy. Yeah, so I, I think Eugenia mentioned the excuse that the, they gave was they had exercise in school. I can totally relate to that. Like, uh, I think all kids will find all excuses. They already have PE lessons. They already have CCA. Um, why do they still need to uh, involve more uh, in, in more sports? Like they want more time to talk to their friends, things like that, right? Yeah, so um, I think uh, really it's, it's getting to know them. Like this could, I mean, personally, what, I've, um, what, what I, I, I think is sometimes our children are um, find, using these as excuses to tell us that you stay away from me, I'm getting old already, I want mm. my independence and things yeah. like that. Um, but hence, you know, um, communicate with them. I think a lot of times um, it's communication that can help to build these bridges. I, let them understand why you're doing this. Um, and get their buy-in. Get their buy-in by doing things that they're interested in, right? Um, they can find us a chore, you know, um, they can find us like, ah, oh, it's not cool to be seen with my mom, mm. right? Yeah. Um, so be a cool mom, right? That they want to spend time with you. Sometimes, you know, you can even invite their friends over. Um, like, like, for example, right, even though my daughter is in primary three, I'm, I'm like friends with her friend. Now, they chat so much on WhatsApp using my phone that I end up chatting with <laughs> my daughter's friends, you know, um, not because I want to scoop, um, but because, you know, uh, getting to know the friends and the friends is the one who started chatting with me. Lah. <laughs> and I thought, okay, you know, why not? And um, that, having that connection um, with my daughter, and I know that she's nine now. And very soon she will go into the I don't want to be seen with my mom age. Mm. Um, but I felt that at least this is what I can do right now. Like if if I'm involved in her life, like she can see that it's not uncool to be with your mom, um, then they will be more receptive. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and also uh so also to write on what Journey has said. Uh, because I think both both of I both both of us have similar parenting values. Yeah, so the there's alignment there in some sense, la, which is why we can talk for hours, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, and you know what it means. Yeah. So so for mommy, Eugenia, um, okay, let's talk about the age 15 uh teenager. Um now I forgot what I want what I want to say. Yeah, okay. Um I think um yes, I like the part that Jordan said um to talk about and explain to your 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 teen why you are doing it. Um, I think also be very mindful of your words as well. Uh, mm -hmm. If I were you, I will ask, I would, I will, I will tell my child saying that um, because mommy realized that you are growing up so fast and I really want to spend more time with you. Um, I do not know how, uh, would you be able to tell me how, yeah, and just stop at that. Yeah, because to, maybe to you, doing sports is the activity to do with your kid. Yeah, but actually, if you look at the underlying reason, your desire as a parent, probably, and, I'm, and I, may, I may be wrong, you want to spend more time with your kid. And doing sports is just one of the many vehicles you can do. Probably just go for a walk. It's also sports, right? Yeah, uh, it's uh, climbing up the stairs or just going to buy something that your teen likes. And instead of, take, of, of taking bus, you walk. Instead of driving, you and you walk. Yeah, so, so I think um, let's ask ourselves what do you want out of this activity, which is called sports? Probably you're looking into bonding as well. So what are the other ways to bond with your kids? Yeah, so let's not limit ourselves uh, to just sports because today's topic is, is on sports. 
Yeah. Right. Walk yeah, also sports, I... right? If you walk for 10 km, uh, it's no joke, eh? Yeah, no joke. It's no joke. Really. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, it's it's I think the the broader topic is the the bonding with the child. Yeah. Not um sports is one mechanism. There are many, many mechanisms, art, you know, things like that. But yeah, um, these are all various ways. And I think I, I'm really um, so glad to have known John because I, although you know, he runs a math, math enrichment center, he's bringing all these resources, um, like people that he knows to talk about different topics on how us as parents can improve the relationship with our kids. And it's really amazing. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thanks for the compliment. Now I can fly already. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, thanks for the help as well. Um, actually, and I realized that nowadays, now there are still about five parents, um, on online and, and um, actually, when we think about helping children to do well in school, I realized that there are patterns in families with children who have done well in school as well, and a lot of times it's supportive parents who instill the right values and discipline in their kids. Of course, on on. On, uh, on top of the different help that they give to the kids for different subjects. Yeah, so which right. is why we want to really help the parents uh, at the family level as well. Right. Okay, Eugenia, uh, I hope that you we have answered your question. And again, uh, if you need to talk to Janine, how can they contact you? Um, yeah, so um, you can get at me on Facebook. Right. Uh, you can just drop a quick message that um you got to know me through John's um community. I um and then we can communicate from there. Um and when we have launched our program, we can then share with uh, the greater public. Okay. Right. Can I yes. um hmm. put your Facebook? Sure. Link. My Facebook link. Yes. My profile link. Yes. Okay. I'll just put a comment. Right. Yeah, so so um do do try to just send me a quick text to say that you're from this community. Yeah. So that I know you're not some um, you know, nowadays a lot of all these yeah. scams people, right? Who also imitate your friends and come in. Yeah. So definitely welcome anybody from John's community. I think we are all like minded parents. Yes, yes. Okay. I still have one last question. Yeah. I know that sure. you are 12, 18. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Um because we are still ultimately a community of parents supporting their kids in math, lah, which include you as well. <laughs> yes. I bought your books. Yeah, it okay, helps. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks so much. <laughs> they really help. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. You can give me a testimony. Of that okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, PSLE kids, uh, I think now uh, they're feeling the heat. Lah. Yes. Yeah, just two more months or even less, less than that. Yeah, I think prelims in the next couple of weeks for oh, yes. some of the schools, yes. Mostly after National Day. Yeah, correct. So I think um, under a lot of hit, plus the, the whole circuit breaker period, a lot of uncertainty. I, um, ganjongness lah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so right mm. now, uh, I know that now you know a lot because when you're into multi-sports, of course, all the tips will help. Yeah, so now... Uh, if I can invite you to walk down the memory lane to your younger self. And then as you walk, uh, then you see the 12 year old journey. Eh. Then she's so close uh, that actually she's looking at you. Eh. And then you can almost <laughs> touch her. She's so close. Yeah. And it's quite creepy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. then, 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 then she looks at you. Then from the older self, uh, what will you tell her then? What will you tell her from the older self to the younger self? That's oh. wrong, right? That's anything. Right. Um, what I will tell her, <clears throat> excuse me. Wow. <clears throat> excuse me. Now we see a clear truth. <laughs> right. Um, what I will tell her is really um uh, don't be so uptight. Um, like I can imagine when I was in um preparing for PSLE, it was quite scary. Right. Um, don't be so uptight. Uh really results doesn't um Result doesn't determine who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, results doesn't determine who you are. And um, you know, just do your best. Lah. I will say that to her. Because I, I remember I was very stressed. Mm -hmm. Like, very, very stressed. And um, yeah, it was scary. Mm -hmm. Especially, I think, math. Math um, for PSLE has always been um, a pretty scary subject. Mm 
Mm. Right, yeah. So at that time, it, it's really just results doesn't determine who you are. And yeah, and we really just do our best. And I hope like for parents with PSLE kids is um, be kind to the child as well. Yeah, uh, you don't want to because of one examination uh, really ruin your entire relationship with your children. Yeah, and that's why people like John are here, right? To help you through the process, um, to mm -hmm. make it easier uh, and to preserve the relationship that you have with your child without having to scream at them 24-7. I'm guilty of that sometimes as well, uh, then regret after that, right? <laughs> I have been the same shoes as well. Uh, so uh, just acknowledge it and then we move on. Uh. Yes. Mm. Yeah, so that's what I'll do. Okay, parents. Uh, well, I think the interesting thing is uh, the viewership is going up. Yeah, I think parents are getting a lot of value out of it. Uh, so if you missed the previous part, go and watch a replay. And then um, again, like what I said, um, all these are meant for you. And if you can add in one more thing, like talk to your kids a bit more today, just be with them, it will improve the relationship and ultimately the grades as well. Maybe, mm. Probably not now, uh, but e eventually. Yeah. So Janine, thanks so much for your time and uh, I should have booked you for like 10 hours. <laughs> yeah, I, I know to... we can go on for 10 hours. Yeah. There's so much to talk about. Yeah, yeah, all the time. I think really, really, um, thank you so much, John. You're really an amazing person um, doing all of this uh, really just just to support the parents for with like no agenda you know nothing nothing that you expect in return and it's really fun to be speaking with you again uh, yeah. yeah looking forward to next time okay thanks so don't go off first uh, I'll start on Facebook like, and parents thanks so much and stay safe yeah the COVID is still around and yesterday the WHO actually did announce that I mean it's a big deal if they don't announce it that uh, they may not find the cure. Yeah, I mean, it's in the news, right? I'm not sure if you heard it. No, I haven't. Like, what? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, so the only way is to practice safety distance as well as uh, proper hygiene. Mm. Yeah, okay. Uh, don't go out first for parents. Bye-bye, take care. Bye-bye.